today we are looking at some practice problems uh, concerned with non catalytic gas solid reactions. So, first one is on a fluidized bed. Okay. Bed. Quickly draw what a fluidized bed looks like. Okay. So, let us look at an example let us zinc sulphide plus oxygen giving you zinc oxide plus sulphur dioxide. The context is that zinc sulphide is available in Udaipur region of this country and fluid bed is the contacting that is used for uh, making um, molten I mean metal zinc by first roasting of zinc sulphide. Now, why is it that they use uh, uh, fluidized bed? why they would use a fluidized bed. The reason is this reaction is exothermic and generates a lot of heat and you can get that heat out by putting a coil in which you put water through and then you get steam out that is steam. So, it is one way by which you can recover heat of the reaction quite effectively. So, this is one of the major reasons why people would use a, a fluidized bed. Now, just put it in the context, let me do a small calculation as to what the numbers look like. I will do a small calculation. Let us say you have sulfur plus oxygen giving you sulfur dioxide. Okay. Let us look at a plant producing 1000 tons per day of sulfur dioxide, which means roughly, I am just putting some rough numbers, 500 tons per day of sulfur is what is consumed roughly. Okay. We all agree? Okay. Now, amount of steam that can be produced from 500 tons of sulfur, I mean if you look at the heat of I mean heat of combustion and so on, you will find that you can produce about 2000 tons of steam. In other words, for every ton of sulfur that you burn, about 4 tons of steam can be produced. Okay. Therefore, a 1000 tons per day sulfur dioxide plant will produce about 2000 2, tons of steam. Okay. Now, if you put the steam through a, uh, through a turbine and produce electricity about 0.25 megawatt hour per ton of steam is what you will generally get 0.25 megawatt hour. So, 0.25 megawatt hour from 2000 tons of steam. So, what is the total amount of power that you can produce? It is about 500 megawatt hour per day correct or if you talk about 25 hours in a day just for calculation sake this about 20 megawatt hour of electricity is what can be produced in a 1000 tons per day sulfur dioxide plant and this is what they do also, this is what is done. Now, the, what the fluid bed becomes quite effective, the fluid bed becomes quite effective because the heat transfer coefficient here is typically about 200 kilo calories per meter squared per hour degree C. It is fairly large, fairly large heat transfer coefficient. That is one of the reasons why fluid beds are preferred particularly if you want to recover heat from the chemical reaction or if you want to provide heat to a chemical reaction also fluid becomes very useful because the heat transfer coefficients are quite good. Okay. It is in that context this particular problem is uh, has been uh, taken. So, let us look at this problem. The problem says 
you have a gaseous you have a fluid bed okay i'll draw it in the form of a stirred tank it's easier to okay you have gas coming in and then uh, solids coming in okay so you have solids okay i'll draw it from here so the gas and our reaction is a gas plus b solid gives you r gas plus s solid okay what it says is that this reaction is uh, under reaction control reaction control okay and it also says that the time required for complete consumption is 1 hour 1 hour and uh, what else does it say? And you have a fluid bed in which solids are fed at 1 ton per hour okay? and then the solids are taken out okay? through a this one solids are fed. Okay? This is I will put the solids feed here solids 1 ton per hour. The question is or maybe it's in the next page. What's the question? Find the weight. Sorry, find the weight of solids in the reactor if gas and solids are in mixed flow. Okay, gas and solids are mixed flow means what? If this is this is X A is the conversion here, and this is the solids coming in X B, and X B and X A are related by their uh, stoichiometry which we have studied already. It's a mixed flow. That's the important point. It's okay, how do you do this problem? solids are going in solids are coming out gas is going in gas is coming out and it says he wants 90 percent 90 percent gas conversion this should be 0.9 how do we do this problem okay so do this first let us recognize that these solids these solids that are coming in it reacts by the shrinking core model something that we have learnt already and this shrinking core model under reaction control shrinking core model under reaction control that we have learnt already, which says what d by d t of n b, if it is a single particle, I am not talking about fluid bed now, it is a single particle reacting, this reacts as per some, in this particular case it is some minus of k s sorry k s reaction control k s times c a g and it does not say it is it is irreversible. So, and then your stoichiometric coefficient is 1, so that also is not k s times c a g. Okay. And uh, what is the surface area of interest? If it is reaction control, we said it is should be 4 pi r c square. Is it okay? This is something that we have said before and we are just stating what we have known already. The left hand side we said that d by d t of 4 by 3 pi r c cube times rho b, this is what and this is minus of k s c a g times 4 pi r c square. Okay. This is all right. Now, this we have integrated and then expressed, we have done it in class, so we will not do it again. So, we have integrated this and then finally, we got a result something like this. I just state the result R c by R equal to T by tau R, where tau R is given as rho b times R divided by k s times c a g okay. and the stoichiometric factor in this case it is 1, so it is 1. Okay. Is it all right? Now, let us look at the problem now. The problem says the time for complete consumption of the particle with concentration of gas at C A 0 is 1 hour. Okay. The time for complete consumption of the particle with con at C A 0 if it is 1 hour, what happens in our fluid bed? What is the concentration of gas in contact with the solid in the fluid bed? we have done the experiment the data given is that if the concentration of gas is going in at C A 0. Okay. The data given is that if it is at C A 0 the time for complete consumption is 1 hour it is undergoing 90 percent reaction. So, what is coming out what is the concentration of gas coming out it will be 0 0.1 C A 0. So, this is 0 0.1 C A 0. Okay. So, if the gas that is coming out is 0 0.1 C A 0 what is the time for complete consumption if the gas concentration is 0.1 C A 0 in contact with the solid? 
if it is C A 0 it is 1 hour if it is 0 0.1 C A 0 what is the time for complete consumption 10 hours. 10, hours. 10 hours correct is it okay with all of you therefore, tau r at 0 0.1 C A 0 is 10 hours do we agree with this all of us okay. Now, the question that is in front of us is we have these solids these solids okay it is reacting as per shrinking core model where the rtd of the system is given by the rtd of stirred tank this you have said correct the average conversion from a reactor okay where the rtd is specified is given by 0 to infinity and we said we integrate this 0 to tau tau to infinity we have done that so we can integrate this in parts 0 to tau of 1 minus of x b times e t of d t plus tau to infinity 1 minus of x b e t of d t and we said this term disappears it disappears because 1 minus of x b is identically 0 in the range of tau to infinity okay that is why we deleted this term is this point clear to all of you why we deleted this term the reason is that when tau time is greater than tau the particle which spends time greater than tau reacts completely and that is why x b is 1 therefore 1 minus of x b is 0 therefore this term disappears okay so you only have to integrate 1 minus of x b et dt given what is the value of 1 minus of x b let me write it down uh, let me write it down here from here we get r c by r is 1 minus of t by tau r this is uh, 1 minus of x b uh, is it right r c by r is what 1 minus of x b to the power of 1 by 3 is it okay or 1 minus of x b equal to 1 minus of t by tau r to the power of 3 okay so we, we the average that we are looking for is 0 to tau 1 minus t by tau r to the power of 3 and E function for a stirred tank is okay. this is all right. So, this is the answer we are looking for is it all right. Okay. Now, can you integrate this? Can this be integrated? Can the right hand side be integrated or not? So, let me just expand this and see whether it looks ok or it looks very complicated. Let me expand this 1 minus t by tau r minus 3 plus 3 t by tau r. Okay minus whole cube all right so it's 1 by t bar e to the power of minus t by t bar of dt this is the integration that you have to do integral sorry integral 0 to tau tau r actually is it okay this can be done by all of us is there a, is it difficult complicated take too long Okay. Now, it might take a little while. So, to save some time what I have done we you can do this at home it simplifies like this I will just put this final form. Okay. Uh, we should do it ideally, but you know it is not that it is too complicated. So, we can do this at home we just get this. So, where alpha is tau r by t bar. Okay alpha is tau r by t bar. Now, what is given problem specifies that we need 90 percent of what 90 percent of the solid is to be converted. So, what is x b 0.9. So, x b is given as 0 0.9 equal to thrice alpha minus of 6 alpha squared plus 6 alpha cube minus of 6 e to the power of minus of alpha by alpha cube. Can we solve this? I want you to solve it here a way to solve this is take some values 
take some values, three or four calculations all that is required uh, to get a feel for the kind of answers. Okay. Three or four numbers we have to take. Huh? Let us do one small calculation all of us. Let us say alpha equal to 10 quickly say alpha equal to 10. So, what is the right hand side? Alpha equal to 10 I am just writing it down you tell me whether I have done it correctly. alpha equal to 10 yes or no. So, what is the value right hand side? 0.24 do we all get this 0.24. So, therefore, alpha equal to 10 is not the answer. Okay. Let us try alpha equal to 5. So, 3 by 5 minus what is it 3 by 5 minus 6 by 25 plus 6 by 125 minus 6 e to the power of minus 5 divided by 125. Okay. Is it all right? So, what is it now? Uh, so, right hand side is 0 point we all get this it is okay with everyone. So, even this is no good alpha equal to 5 also not a good answer all right let us try what alpha equal to 1 alpha is 1. So, 3 by alpha so R H S 3 by alpha minus 6 by okay, 3 by 1 so 6 by 1 plus 6 by 1 minus 6 e to the power of minus of 1 by 1. So, what does it become? Point. So, R H S equal to 0 0.79 is it? Okay. I have made some mistake is it? Okay we are closer. So, shall we now try 0 point, 0 point 0.5 point 0.5 is point 0.89 we almost got it then good. So, it is 3 by alpha sorry alpha is 0 0.5 and then 6 by 0 0.25 plus 6 divided by 0 0.125 minus of 6 e to the power of minus 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.125. Okay. So, that according to my friend is 0 0.89 which is about um, this is R H S. So, L H S is 0 0.9. So, our answer is probably around 0 0.5. Okay. Say it again. It is 0 0.4 is the answer is it. So, alpha equal to 0 0.4 my friend says X B becomes 0 0.9. Okay. I see you can directly solve this is it. Okay. Very good, very good. Okay, then. So, let us go with alpha equal to 0.4 because it is a neat number. So, now I ask you what is the hold up of solids in the fluid bed? Alpha is 0 0.4. Alpha is 0 0.4. What is the hold up? The question is the question says find the weight of solids in the reactor. Okay. Weight of solids means what hold up of solids. Means. So, W divided by F s equal to t bar yes or no and alpha equal to tau divided by t bar. Okay. Now, do we know alpha? Do we know alpha? It is 0.4. Do we know tau? What is it? What is tau? 10 hours. Why is it 10 hours? Because the gas is in contact with a gas of concentration which is only 10 percent of the data that is given to us. Correct. That is why tau is not 1 hour, but it is 10 hours. So, tau is 10 divided by t bar. So, t bar is how much? 10 divided by 0 0.4 that is equal to 25 hours. Okay. Now, what is F s? It says treating at the rate of 1 ton per hour. Correct. So, F s is 1 ton per hour. Therefore, W divided by 1 equal to 25. Therefore, W equal to 25 tons. So, hold up of solids is 25 tons. Is this clear? Okay. What we are trying to get across to you here is in gas solid reactions, single pellet analysis, we do experiments with a given concentration of gas, but in the equipment, the actual concentration may be very different from in which you have done your experiments. You must correct the time required for complete consumption by appropriately accounting for the 
gas concentration which is responsible for the reaction that is what this problem is all about. All right, we go to the next question. So, here we have a rotary kiln okay. uh, in the handout I gave you that uh, minus tau g this is to read as l n of beta minus of x a divided by beta equal to minus tau g times alpha this minus is not very clear. So, please make that correction in your okay. Now, here we have a rotary kill. Now, when do we use a rotary kill? You have solids, gas, okay, this is gas, this is solids, okay, and then products are coming out. The rotary kill is a very popular device, particularly in the lime calcination. Lime calcination, lime calcination, okay, lime calcination around the world. Uh, uses probably 15 percent of the total carbon dioxide that goes into the atmosphere comes from lime calcination. About something like 6 billion tons of carbon dioxide measured as carbon or 25 billion tons of carbon dioxide is what we throw into the atmosphere these days out of which 15 percent comes from lime kiln. It is not a small quantity. Okay. Now, why rotary kiln for lime calcination? Why rotary kill for lime calcination? Why rotary kill for uh, soda ash manufacture? If you go to factories making soda ash, you will see a rotary kill. Okay. How do we explain this? We talked, yeah. The temperature required are very high. Temperature required are very high, and therefore. How do you supply that heat in a rotary kiln? That is more difficult. See, in rotary kilns, the heat that is required is actually supplied along with the raw material. For example, if you go to lime kiln, they will actually add lime and then coal also. Coal and lime go simultaneously together. So, that as the coal burns, that the heat of reaction is used for the decomposition of lime. So, that means what you have to take care is that whatever you add to the raw material that does not affect or it benefits the final product. For example, coal combustion the ash actually is a part of the final product itself. So, it does not affect not very seriously the quality of the final product. So, in rotary kill you will generally put your fuel also along with the uh, raw material. It is not very easy to uh, provide heat from the walls of the rotary kill because it is rotating it is not very convenient. So, what is done is very nicely insulated therefore, you do not lose too much of heat, but all the heat of combustion is actually added along with the raw material. Okay. So, you have let us say C A C O 3 plus heat giving you C A O plus C O 2. Okay. All right. But in this case, it is not uh, the problem there is A gas plus B B solid B B solid I think B solid equal to C gas plus D solid. So, it is not uh, quite similar to uh, lime calcination. Can we think of any other example of uh, process industry where gas and solid react to give you gas and solid? as an example zinc sulfide to zinc oxide. Okay. Now, zinc sulfide to zinc oxide people do not use a rotary kill why zinc sulfide to zinc oxide rotary kills are not common if you go to Hindustan zinc in Udaipur it is a fluid bed. We are concerned about the quality of product. Quality of product. Yes, no, in, in, uh, in zinc sulfide fortunately zinc sulfide combustion um, or uh, roasting gives you a lot of uh, heat. So, there is no need to provide external heat source. Okay. So, uh, that is why in, indeed what we want to do is recover a lot of heat from zinc sulfide roasting that is why rotary kills are not suitable for heat recovery, not suitable for heat recovery. Rotary kills are very good for very large throughputs very large throughputs are what uh, soda ash for example large throughputs. So, it is very useful. 
Okay. So, what, what is the closest example of A gas plus B solid giving you C gas plus D solid? What is the closest we can think of in process industry? Closest? Cement. What do they do in cement industry? The cement clinker is made in this. What, what happens there? You have lime, you have coal okay, and all the fluxes and actually the clinker forms inside the kiln. Okay. The, what is the product gases? Is carbon dioxide. Okay. What are the feed gas? Air. Okay. So, air burns gives you the heat that is required for the cement production to take place. So, very good example of cement manufacturing, an excellent example of this reaction. Okay. Now, it says the reaction it says that it is under shrinking core with external diffusion control. Now, how do we justify in cement manufacture for example, how do we justify external diffusion control? Do you think it is a justifiable assumption if it is cement manufacture? You will find I, mean, I do not know if some of you have seen the cement industry, what comes out is a clinker. The clinker is uh, typically about 7, 8, 10 centimeters you know it is not small not 10 centimeters maybe about 5, 6 centimeters. So, it is get a clinker which is then powdered and then sold to us as, uh, as cement. So, what you make is clinker. Okay. So, clinker has a reasonably large size. Okay. Now, here it says external mass transfer controlled. So, would you think that uh, cement manufacture would be an example of external mass transfer control? What is your perception? I hope you understand after try and understand if you are working in Larsen and Tubro, you are building up uh, a cement plant in one of these places in one of the largest uh, you know the LNT builds many of these plants. So, you might be involved in design of some of these things. So, is this question is this assumption correct or is not a good assumption. Now, the answer is like this you will find that reactions in which there is a solid product formation external diffusion internal diffusion and reaction all are important. We have talked about it. When the temperatures are very high reaction kinetics is not all that important. Reaction kinetics is not very important. It is external diffusion or diffusion through the product layer. You see these are the two important layers. Okay. Now, what seems to happen in this uh, in the cement industry is that what you add is actually powdered rock of limestone, powdered coal. So, as it is going through it is actually because of the temperature it forms a clinker. So, for a substantial part it is only heat transfer to the uh, particles which is very important. Only in the later stages as because of glassy things when it forms a, a solid it becomes diff. So, for substantial part of this kill it is actually controlled by external mass transfer that is the example that we have taken. Okay. There are better examples we can take. So, this is not a bad example although it may not be the best example. Okay. Now, we have done all these mathematics, but we want to do it again just to put it in the context. What is the context? You have A gas uh, let me just quickly write down just put it in the context our A F A 0 times 1 minus of x A and we have B is F B 0 minus of F A 0 x A. Okay then you have C which is F C 0 plus F A 0 times x A, then you have D which is F D 0 plus F A 0 x A. Okay. And then we said that our equilibrium constant is K P, it is given by what is uh, gas is P C divided by P A. I put a star to indicate that it is equilibria okay. and we expressed all these things uh, P C and all that in terms of concentrations we would not do it again. So, K P P C star divided by P A star. So, from our stoichiometry we get something like this correct. We have done this. So, I would not go this again. So, so that our equilibria is given by K P minus of theta C divided by 1 plus this we have done. So, we know what is the equilibria and how it is determined by the compositions of our choice. Okay. Is it okay what we have done? 
So, this this representation comes from stoichiometry we have done this before we have done this here okay, and it directly follows from stoichiometry we have done this in class. Now, rate at which the reaction takes place the rate we say this is R a dash divided by where R a dash is is the reaction rate per unit surface area and A s is the surface area per unit volume. Okay. This is what we have said and if it is if our reaction is what what is shrink external diffusion control. So, k g times C a minus of C a star times our surface area per unit volume is it ok. So, now we can convert this you have d f a 0 d x a by d v minus sign I have forgotten a minus sign I am sorry minus sign. So, it is minus minus of k g c a is 1 minus of x a c a star it is 1 minus of x a star so, okay, times a s all right. So, this simplifies as f a 0 this becomes d sorry simplifies as d x a by d of gas residence time k g times x a star minus of x a okay. or cancels off and this is our a s is it all right. Okay. Where this x a star is what we have got here our x a star is is this. Okay. The, the context of we have said this earlier as well the context here is that this value of theta c theta c is the products in the feed and this has a bad effect on the rate of chemical reaction because it affects x a star. And in many cases we may not have a great uh, choice because we have to accept the fact that you know this amount we have to accept for example, calcium carbonate decomposition we said uh, we may have to accept this theta c to be about a significant value of the total uh, uh, resistance. Okay. All right. What is A s? Surface area per unit volume what did we say if it is external diffusion times number of particles divided by volume okay. and then we said our experimentally measurable quantity is this. That means, the hold up of solids in the equipment hold up is actually a data that is readily available for all equipments given the hydrodynamics people will be able to tell us what is the hold up. Okay. So, the hold up of solids epsilon r is readily available therefore, we are able to determine a s as s equal to 3 epsilon r divided by r something like this. Okay. So, that our equation which describes our process is this thrice epsilon r by r k g within brackets x a star minus of x a. Okay. Now, if we look at this equation we find that it is this term which will determine the size of the equipment. Okay. If we can do something about this term the size can be reduced if this term is poor the size is very large. Okay. So, let us integrate this when we integrate this what do we get l n of actually we have denoted x a star this we have denoted as beta therefore, when we integrate this it will come out to be what will it be l n of beta minus of x a divided by beta. So, l n of beta minus of x a divided by beta equal to minus of tau g if I call this as alpha if this is alpha it becomes something like this is it ok. Now, for the data given for the data given can we quickly calculate what is the value all of you please calculate what is alpha alpha is thrice epsilon r k g divided by r this is alpha and then beta is um, there it is k p minus of theta c divided by 1 plus k p. Please calculate and tell me these numbers please what is alpha and what is uh, beta alpha is how much epsilon where is epsilon r somewhere where is that or oh, this one oh, this is symbol is wrongly written and please make a change this is a 
hold up is 0.15. This is epsilon actually, not tau. This please make that correction. Yes, epsilon. This is epsilon. So it's 0.15. So three times 0.15. Okay. And kg. How much is kg? Where are we? 0 0.01. 0 0.01 and what is r 0 0.05. So, how much is this is equal to 0 0.09 units what are the units alpha is in what units units per second. Okay. Now, what is beta what is k p where is k p where are we ah, k p is 5 k p is 5 and theta c theta c is 1 uh, this is theta b uh, it's wrongly written please make that correction so theta c is 1 okay and then 5 plus 1 is 6 so 4 by 6 equal to 0 0.67 so you what is the problem specifies that we require what is the extent of reaction sometimes mentioned somewhere not mentioned what is the conversion required x a desired is 0.8 x e 0.8 of x e what is x e x e is what 0.67 therefore x a is 0.67 times 0.8 how much is that 0.536 is it all right okay so x a is known so you can find out what is gas residence time tell me ln of beta 0 0.67 minus of 0 0.536 divided by 0 0.67 equal to minus tau g times alpha is how much 0 0.09. So, tau g equal to 17.8 seconds. Okay. So, what this is saying is that the the reactions that is controlled by gas film does not require much residence time okay so this is a point that we all should appreciate so it is it is something else which requires lot more residence time therefore if you design on the basis of the of the gas phase residence time you will probably get a, a kill which is quite small but that would not do your job because the kiln has to do lot more job because the clinker has to form. The cement has been formed, but it has been converted to clinker. Now, that may be a much slower process that is why the, the kiln is much much longer okay, that is the point that I was trying to get across to you. Okay. All right. Let us go forward. Okay. What is solids residence time? Solid residence time tau s is what? hold up of solids which is V times epsilon r divided by the flow of solids what is solid is B correct F B. The solid uh, the volumetric flow of solids uh, may not change F B 0 divided by rho B may not change very much in the sense that the solid density at the feed and solid density at the exit may not be very different it is actually in this case data is not given. So, we take the volumetric flow of solids as simply equal to volumetric flow of solids at the feed which is F B 0 divided by solid density which is 50. So, what is the uh, volumetric flow? So, what is the volumetric flow of solids? Density is 50 and what is F B 0? 3.6 multiplied by 0 0.7 divided by 15. Is it okay? Is it all right with everybody? All right. So, epsilon r is 0 0.15 and then divided by 3.6 multiplied by 0 0.7 divided by 15. So, we still what is the volume of the equipment? 5 0 I am sorry 5 0. Okay, okay, okay. Now, what is the volume that we still do not know? How do you find volume? Gas residence time multiplied by the gas flow. So, V naught times tau g is. So, what is V naught? So, F A 0 divided by C A 0, F A 0 is 3.6, C A 0 is 0 0.02. So, 3.6 divided by 0 0.02 okay, multiplied by tau g, tau g is what 17 seconds you told me 17.8. So, how much is volume? What is the volume? 
how many cubic meters? Oh. <laughs> so, you have divided by 3600. Huh? Okay. So, how much does it now? It looks much better now. What is the answer? 0 0.89 cubic meters. All right. 0 0.89. So, what is the solids? 2 point? 2.67 what? Solids is 2.67 seconds. So, what we are trying to put across here is that the gas uh, control uh, phenomena is does not occupy much volume that is the point we are trying to get across here. Okay. So, you told that volume of the clinker uh, depends on kg. It does not. See, because that, that reaction is not occupying too much of volume. All the rest is for converting the cement into clinker. That is what takes most of the volumes. Okay. Is it all right? Shall we go forward? Yeah. That is why I am saying now the, the what we have looked at here is only the part that is controlled by gas external external film. Okay. See there is the, the, the fact that we provide a much more volume is because that form a clinker has been it has been converted to clinker it has to you know that is what takes a lot of space that is what I am trying to say. That is not in this problem we will put another problem to take care of that. In this one we are only looking at a small part of the whole exercise showing that this gas film control is not such an important thing as far as this particular problem is concerned. So, that is the number that comes out of this particular problem. Okay. We will do that also a little later. Third, this exercise is uh, C plus H 2 O giving you C O plus H 2. This is Q 3. So, uh, all of you have seen this. Huh? Uh, I am sure you know there is so much talk about gasification of biomass and uh, what happens in gasification of biomass is that you expose the carbonaceous materials to a high temperature with steam. Okay. When you expose it to a high temperature with steam you get carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Okay. Both carbon monoxide and hydrogen are very valuable materials. In fact, uh, there is still lot of work goes on around the world to somehow perfect this reaction. This reaction is endothermic this is an endothermic reaction okay. and uh, the thermal uh, about 25 kilo calories per mole is the kind of energy that is associated with this uh, reaction. It is not small, the, the heat effects are not small, but the products are very valuable, the products are extremely valuable both carbon monoxide and hydrogen are very, very valuable products. And therefore, this is of great interest all over the world people are trying to look for various kinds of catalysts to enhance its rates of reactions and so on. Nothing much has really happened from biomass, from biomass. If you look at coal, coal is not just carbon, it also has hydrogen. So, if you, if you look at coal, I mean the situations are slightly better, situations are much better for a number of reasons. What happens is that 25 kilo calories per mole is the energy that is required for this reaction and you have to get this energy from somewhere then only you can drive this reaction. You ask yourself how will you provide this energy? How do you provide this energy? Yesterday we looked at what is called as a reactor and regenerated system. In fact, the context of that and we said solids are moving between the two. We mentioned that yesterday we did a problem also to illustrate. Now, looking at this and looking at this problem of coal, coal gasification. Can you think of a way by which uh, we can do this coal gasification little better? Coal gasifications have really not taken off you know all over the world it is uh, you know 50 years later you know we are still uh, struggling with a good coal gasification technology correct. What do we do? Do we see some solution by there is in a two reactor system. See in the petroleum industry all of us have seen there is this cat cracker. What is what happens in a cat cracker? 
cat cracker there is this reactor and there is this regenerator. Okay. From the reactor the solids descend by gravity from the regenerator it goes up by pneumatic conveying. Okay. What happens here this is the reactor this is the regenerator here catalyst gets deactivated here catalyst is regenerated. Okay. So, this is the regenerator this is the reactor correct. Now, you want to conceptualize the same thing for the case of gasification of coal. What is the object here? The object here is gasification of coal in this reactor gasification should occur which means C plus H 2 O should go to C O plus H 2 H 2. For this you need heat. So, what you would, would like to do you want to burn coal here you will burn coal burn coal and because of that heat this solids here you want to take it there. So, that the heat the solids serve as the heat carrier for the gasification reaction you understand. Now, uh, this, this technology itself has not really taken off you know it is not uh, come to a stage where we can think of coal gasifications, but if you can do this if you can separate the, the generation of heat and supply the heat by this process then the advantage here this gas the calorific value is very high because you do not allow the combustion this is air. So, this is lot of nitrogen here this nitrogen does not get in otherwise lot of nitrogen gets into the combustion ga these uh, gases and your thermal value is very low. See most of this uh, uh, what is called as biomass gasifier that is a, that is running around the world uh, the thermal value will be around 800 to 900 kilo calories per cubic meter 800 to not in, sometimes even less it is a very lean gas you see and therefore, it is not very suitable for various types of engines unless you have a substantial amount of uh, additional fuel like diesel you have to put some diesel then only it will work otherwise it will not work. By itself you are not able to use these gases in combustion in IC engines because it is just too lean you see this is where the technology is, is stuck for the last number of years. We do not have a way by which you can produce a gas which has got sufficient thermal value. Okay. And that is why coal gasification programs have more or less uh, uh, sort of not going forward. Now, recently thanks to a huge increase in, in the cost of uh, you know crude oil the interest has come back again you know in India for example, I mean when I joined this department some 30 years ago it was not very important. Now, it really depends upon the cost of uh, fuel oil I mean uh, what is called uh, crude oil. Now, the crude oil cost is so high the tremendous amount of interest around the world, okay. but still we do not seem to have a good way by which we can carry solids and heat to the reactor there is a problem we are facing. Okay. Now, the question here what is this question this non catalytic reaction is carried out in an isothermal enclosure with large quantity of steam at temperature T reaction is endothermic and reversible set up a model express conversion time relationship for the shrinking particle. Now, we have a shrinking particle what do we have we have a particle we start with this particle and now this particle becomes this as the reaction proceeds. How do we handle this problem we write this d by d t of n b Okay, equal to what sum R B times S. Okay, there is no change. What is this S? S would be the reacting surface. What is that reacting surface? When you start, this radius is R. As the reaction produces, it, it becomes R C. So, or in other words, the reacting surface it is always exposed to the gas. Okay. In the shrinking particle the reacting surface is always exposed this is C A G and there is uh, we are assuming that there is no external gas film I think this is under reaction control is it right it is not mentioned it is not mentioned. So, uh, at least ash is not there correct there is no product layer there is no product layer correct. 
So, either it is controlled by chemical reaction or it is controlled by external mass transfer or both, we do not know. Okay. Since nothing is specified, we should consider both and then bring it together. We have done that also, correct. So, let us first look at reaction control. Reaction control. So, what is our N B is 4 by 3 pi R C cube times rho B rho B times D by D T. Okay. The right hand side is what? If it is reaction control K S times C A G, okay. uh, our stoichiometric factor if it is there it is probably 1 and I will put a negative sign to indicate that it is getting consumed multiplied by 4 pi R C squared take into account the surface area. Is this all right? Okay. Now, let us recognize that this situation is very different from the situation we considered earlier. The earlier situation was there was an unreacted core here. Okay, and the the gases were diffusing. Okay, and there was we said when this reaction control there was no resistance in the product layer. That was what was the situation we had considered earlier. Here that is not the situation. The situation here is that the particle itself shrinks. Therefore, at every instant of time, the unreacted surface of the particle is exposed to the gas. Okay, that is the difference between the two situations. Okay. So, can we uh, take this forward now? So, the left hand side is 4 pi r c squared rho b d r c by d t on the left hand side. The right hand side is minus b times k s times c a g times 4 pi r c squared. So, 4 pi r c squared disappears. Okay. Yes or no? So, this we can integrate, we can integrate and uh, we will get something similar to what we have got before. So, R c by R equal to T by tau. I put an S here to indicate the shrinking particle where tau R s is rho b times R divided by b times k s times c a g. Okay. Is it all right what we have done? Now, we have been talking about uh, uh, shrinking core models and then also talked just now about shrinking particles. Now, we would like to look at this whole issue of shrinking particle uh, in the instance of external diffusion control. Now, why we are looking at external diffusion control is that this could be one of the controlling mechanisms that you might encounter and therefore, we should have uh, appropriate formulations in our hand. So, what I have got here is uh, a particle of uh, initial radius r which is uh, which is undergoing which is sort of uh, burning let us say and uh, initial radius is r and as the reaction proceeds the particle is shrinking because combustion of coal for example is a good example so we want to see how we can relate the extent to which the combustion is taking place to the fundamental parameters of the process so the rate at which the particle is uh, reacting is the rate at which uh, it's, it's, if it is an external diffusion control, we said k g times c a g is the rate of uh, supply of material and then 4 pi r c squared is the area over which the supply takes place and b is the uh, stoichiometric. So, we have a a sorry a gas plus b b solid gives you products, this is your reaction. Okay. So, b is the stoichiometry. So, this is the representation at of uh, how the particle is reacting and how it can be related to the mass transfer coefficient, the composition in the external composition and this is the 4 pi r c squared is the surface area over which the reaction takes place correct. Or in other words, the area over which the diffusion is taking place is 4 pi r c squared and as the, as the particle is shrinking this r c will keep decreasing and to that extent this quantity will keep on decreasing. Okay. So, we have to take into account the effect of this decreasing surface area on the reaction rate that is what we want to do right now. Now, what is N b? We know that N b is 4 by 3 pi r c cubed rho b. Okay. Now, we can differentiate the left hand side and notice that when you differentiate the left hand side r c squared gets cancelled. So, that you get rho b r c d r c by d t is minus a b times k g times c a g. Now, notice here that this c a g is assumed to be uh, this c a g concentration assumed not to change 
as the reaction proceeds, so that you do not have to worry about changes in CAG. Of course, we will consider a, a situation where we take this uh, changes effects into account shortly, but for the moment we are uh, formulating for a situation where the composition of gas external to the solid is not changing. Now, uh, there is some point also we must bear in mind. This particle is, uh, is burning let us say therefore, it is decreasing in size. In many, many textbooks the how it is described is that because the core is shrinking that is correct therefore, to call it R c is ok. Some people do not put a subscript R c they just call it R showing that you know the particle is shrinking yes and therefore, at any time any instant of time the radius of the particle is R and not call it as R c. The term R c is used for the case of a particle which is of unchanging size when the particles of changing size people prefer to use r instead of a subscript rc i have retained the same subscript rc to so that you know we can uh, we can continue with the same nomenclature between uh, unshrinking particle and shrinking particle okay all right so what we have for a shrinking particle under external diffusion control we have rho b times drc by dt on the left hand side minus of b times kg times cag so this describes how the size of the particle is changing with time B is the stoichiometric coefficient, Kg is mass transfer coefficient, CAG is the composition of the gas external to the solid and assumed to not change as the reaction proceeds because it is in very large excess. Okay. Now, what we know from our basic mass transfer studies is that Sherwood number, Sherwood number which is defined as Kg RC by D, where Kg is the mass transfer coefficient. R c is the particle size at any instant of time and d is the diffusion coefficient of gas from external to the solid surface. Now, this Sherwood number is known to be equal to 1 plus a constant times Reynolds number to the power of number n typically 0 0.8 n equal to 0 0.8 typically this n is equal to 0 0.8 or so. Okay. Now, this is something that we know from our mass transfer literature showing the Sherwood number which is k g r c by d is 1 plus a constant times R c to the power of n, n is typically 0 0.8. Now, if you are looking at flow over a solid where the Reynolds numbers are very low, then we can say that Sherwood number is k g R c by d equal to 1. What are we saying? What we are saying is that for a shrinking particle, the Sherwood number equal to 1 may not be a bad assumption if the flow around the particle is laminar flow. Okay. So, Suppose we look at a situation of very uh, of uh, low Reynolds number, so that Sherwood number k g r c by d equal to 1 is applicable, then what we can do is that in this equation, in this equation rho b d r c by d t equal to minus of b k g c a g, this k g can be replaced by uh, from this equation k g r c by d equal to 1 or k g equal to d by r c. So, what are we saying now? What we are saying now is that this, this equation here, this equation here which, which tells us what is the, uh, the rate at which this radius of the particle shrinking particle is changing, it is determined k g appears on the right hand side and this k g is actually equal to d by r c, this is what we are saying k g equal to d by r c. Therefore, we are able to replace k g as d by r c here on the right hand side, so that we get rho b d r c by d t is minus of b d by r c times c a g. Now, notice here, notice here is that the rate of change of particle size d r c by d t now depends upon d by r c. Okay. This dependence, this dependence is what is interesting when particle is shrinking and it is under external diffusion control. Okay. We just now little, little while ago we derived and shown that for a shrinking particle under reaction control the form of the, of the final result is the same whether it is shrinking particle or whether it is a un, uh, unchanging particle size. In both cases the form of the expressions are the same, but in the case of uh, external diffusion control because of this Sherwood number equal to 1 result we have this dependence on R c as can be seen from this equation. Now, we can integrate this they have done the integration then finally, you get this result that rho b this is the result we get. Okay. This result shows that this is the result which we can simplify further which I have done here. What does it say? What it says is that 1 minus of R c squared by R squared is T by tau f s where f refers to 
film diffusion s refer to shrinking particle and what is f s that means the time for complete consumption the time for complete consumption of the particle is rho b r squared divided by twice b times d times c a g. Now, this, this result this result is slightly different from the result we got when we talked about unchanging particle size. Okay. So, we will we want to look at that result carefully, but before we do that let us also recognize that r c by r is, is 1 minus of x b. Therefore, the same result the same result can be written in this form showing that if there is a shrinking particle and we want to understand the extent of reaction x b then we can write our result in this form where x b is the extent of reaction t is the time of reaction tau f s is the time required for complete consumption of the particle. Okay. So, for the case of external diffusion control shrinking particle we find that the time required for complete consumption of the particle is given by this result. Okay. This is an interesting result that uh, uh, we must bear in mind because it is slightly different from the result that we had seen earlier. Just in the in since uh, the, the context is important, I am just drawing your attention to what we had done a little earlier. What did we do a little earlier? We talked about particles of unchanging size where we showed reaction control, film diffusion control and ash diffusion control and then we derived the time required for complete consumption of the particle for reaction control as rho b r by b k s c a g and then film control we said is rho b r 3 b k g c a g and then for ash diffusion control rho b r squared 6 b d c a g. Okay. Now, moment we went from uh, unchanging particle size this is for unchanging particle size unchanging particle uh, let me write here unchanging unchanging particle size particle size. Okay. Now, if it is a shrinking particle we have we have shown that also that it is re for reaction control this is the result for film diffusion control this is the result. Now, frequently our interest is to be able to tell uh, by looking at the, uh, the results what is the likely way of discerning the controlling mechanism. We have talked about it I mean as a part of your chemical engineering program, but we will just draw attention to what we all know and put it in the context of trying to understand how these reactions take place. Now, suppose for example, a reaction is taking place and we know that if it is a reaction control then if you change the temperature if you change the temperature you will find temperature has tremendous impact on the rate of chemical reaction you will find the effect of temperature would be very strong if it is a reaction control. Okay. It will be very strong if it is reaction control. Now, if it is a film diffusion control we said we know that k g the mass transfer coefficient is a very strong function of the velocities or the hydrodynamics of the conditions under which the reaction is taking place. Therefore, if you do experiments at different flow velocities we can discern whether the changes are due to uh, external diffusion or due to uh, reaction because by changing temperature you can determine whether reaction is the controlling regime by changing velocities we can determine whether uh, mass transfer external mass transfer is controlling. And since tau d uh, this uh, ash diffusion depends upon square of the particle size we had said at an earlier time that by changing the particle size ch particles twice thrice and so on we can determine which whether ash diffusion is a controlling regime. Now, we know that if it is a shrinking particle then there also the dependence of the time for complete consumption depends on square of the particle size. So, there are two kinds of situations one ash diffusion also depends on square of particle size the time for complete consumption. Similarly, the time for complete consumption of a shrinking particle uh, under external diffusion also depends on square of the particles, particle size. Now, the question is how do you distinguish between the two uh, mechanisms say ash diffusion control unchanging particle size film diffusion control shrinking particle the answer is very simple. Now, you can by looking at the situation itself tell whether it is a shrinking particle 
or whether it is an unchanging particle. As an example, let us say you are burning uh, biomass. Now, burning of biomass is a shrinking particle. The reason is biomass has very little ash, 1 percent, 2 percent and so on. Therefore, biomass is a good instance of a shrinking particle because ash is very low. Therefore, simply by looking at the situation itself, you will be able to tell that it is a shrinking particle and therefore, the question of ash diffusion control does not even arise because there is no product layer at all. Okay. So, what I am trying to put across to you is that by looking at the physical situation, by looking at the data that is in front of you carefully, you will be able to discern the controlling mechanisms. Of course, the way to do it is that you should do experiments at different temperatures, you should do experiments at different flow velocities and you should do experiments at different particle size. Therefore, you have to do a number of measurements and looking at those measurements, you will be able to discern where you are, what is the extent of control that you are seeing from different controlling mechanisms. Having said this, having said this, we want to draw our attention to some an important issue that we will face in, in the days ahead and that is uh, uh, that is energy that we all you and I require. Now, as you all know, as you all know that um, fossil fuels are creating various kinds of difficulties uh, to our global environment the reason being of carbon dioxide and so on. So, anything that we can do with biomass would be a great value. Similarly, but biomass is limited by the extent to which we can grow biomass because of limitations in agriculture, plantations and so on. Therefore, maybe there is a time for maybe for, for a number of years from now, maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 years, we may have to depend on coal. Both gasification of coal and gasification of biomass, it is a it is an area of great interest around the world, because this provides energy for our daily needs. Now, whether it is coal or it is biomass, the gasification technology, what is that gasification technology? The gasification technology is that you react carbon with steam to give you carbon monoxide and hydrogen. This reaction C plus H 2 O equal to C O plus H 2 is a well studied reaction. It is endothermic. Its heat of reaction is 29.9 kilocalories to 1000 Kelvin. Its uh, free energy change at standard conditions is minus 1.9 or K p is about 2.6. In other words, it is a reaction where the equilibrium constants are low, it is endothermic and therefore, you must choose reaction conditions which are appropriate for these uh, kinds of uh, thermodynamic parameters. But there is a more important feature that we must recognize. What seems to happen is that if you try to gasify either coal or biomass using a mixture of steam and air, or in other words, you, you, you do this reaction, let me just put it down here, do this reaction something like this. So, you have an enclosure, let us say you have an enclosure and then you have uh, say biomass or coal is going in by air and then you put air and steam at an appropriate temperature. So, that here you get gases. Okay. The reaction is C plus H 2 O giving you C O plus H 2 and then plus because it has air this reaction will also take place you will get C O 2 this also will happen. Now, what seems to have been the major difficulty around the world about gasification technology is that moment we use air to generate the heat this is exothermic correct this is endothermic. Okay. So, it means you are generating heat by this reaction so that it can be supplied to this reaction that means internally you are using the exothermic heat of this reaction to supply the endothermic heat of reaction for reaction 1 if I call this reaction 1 call this reaction 2. But in that process of course, there is a great synergy here understandably, but the fact is that since this oxygen is coming from air, this gases contain lot of nitrogen. The gases that come out contains lot of nitrogen and the experience around the world is that something like 75 percent is nitrogen. Therefore, this is a very lean gas, it is very lean gas. The thermal values are very low maybe 6 to 800 kilocalories per cubic meter. 
and it is so low that make the thermal eff thermodynamic efficiencies we can reach in our uh, in our engines etcetera in our boilers etcetera are also not very large because it is very lean gas often we have to supplement with some other gas and so on some other fuel and so on. Now, therefore, the problem that is of interest to us of course, it is of great interest to all of us that if we can somehow separate the exothermic heat generation this is exothermic okay, this is endothermic. So, if you can separate the exothermic uh, reaction and then move the solids to supply heat for the endothermic reaction that means, by separating the endothermic and the exothermic reactions and making these solids serve as heat carrier, we are able to achieve a very uh, I mean high value, high value, high calorific value, calorific value gas. Okay. So, we are able to achieve a very high calorific value gas by doing this kind of uh, heat supply using the heat carrier that means you have two fluidized beds okay and then the fluidized bed here this serves as the heat carrier into the endothermic reaction and this that material comes back by gravity so you have a pneumatic transfer and uh, gravity transfer of solids so this solid transfer ensures that the heat is supplied and then therefore you are able to get a high value of uh, high thermal value for the gas having said this uh, this whole idea has uh, worked very well in the cat cracking industry, it continues to work very well in the cat cracking industry, but in biomass gasifications and in coal gasifications these ideas have not been very successful yet a great deal of work needs to be carried out before we are in a place to produce a high calorific value gas from coal and biomass. Okay, having said this having said this our our present interest in this exercise in this exercise is to be able to set up the stoichiometry set up the equations to understand how the equilibria affects the rate of chemical reaction because after all ultimately our our rate functions are required to be able to tell how these reactions will proceed in a reaction equipment okay now the the example we are trying to talk about is that there is a continuous input of uh, this material it can be coal it can be biomass of course, coal means it has so many other things as well. I'm just simplified representation. So we are talking about a continuous process in which a material is coming in. It is reacted with steam at a very high temperature, typically 1000 K, so that you have carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So it is this problem we want to represent appropriately so that we can understand from the stoichiometry, you know, how the equilibrium constant affects the reactions and so on. So, I have written the stoichiometry here. So, you have uh, A, B, C, D are uh, the gases. I mean, A is uh, um, moisture and sorry, steam, and B is uh, carbon. Carbon, we are taking this carbon, what we mean is coal or biomass. Okay. And now, C and D are gases, C and D are gases. So, I have written our stoichiometry in this form, showing that uh, because the heat of reaction, I mean, is endothermic, it is 29.9 kilocalories and it is very the equilibrium constants are quite low it is only 2.6. Therefore, we will have to take into effect the equilibria on the reaction rates. Okay. We will do that shortly. Let us write the stoichiometry now. So, now that we know this is the stoichiometric table, so we can return what is concentrations. All these concentrations C A, C B, C C, C D can now be written in terms of, uh, of the extent of reaction which is x. Now, while well, trying to do that what we want to understand is we have a gas law as per gas law we have written the gas law we have done this before let me do it again for you uh, gas law is what gas law is v by v0 equal to p0 by p t by t0 z by z0 and ft by ft0 okay we know this ft by ft0 p0 by pt this is gas law Therefore, if you want to find concentration, you simply have to say what is the molar flow of component A divided by the volumetric flow of component A. And what is the volumetric flow? Because Ft by Ft0, you can see from here when you add up all this, you can say it total comes out to be, uh, if this, this total is twice Fa0. So, I am just uh, adding it up here. Let me just add it up here, so that we all understand. Let me just write here. So, the total gas coming in is what Fa0 is coming in. 
okay. And then what is going out? Going out is f a 0 times 1 plus x a. Okay. So, this, so you can understand na? all the inputs are f a 0 nothing else is coming in. Okay. Output has f a 0 1 plus x a. That means there is an increase in volume. This is in, this is out. Okay. This is f t. This is f t in and this is f t out. Okay. I call this f t 0. Okay. So, f t, f t by f t 0 is 1 plus x a. This is all I am trying to say. Okay. So, since f t by f t 0 is 1 plus x a, v by v 0, v equal to v 0 times 1 plus x a. That is what I have written here. So, what we have done? What we have done is that we have been able to express concentrations of the gases A, B and C in terms of the compositions at the inlet and conversions uh, which is uh, measurable. All these conversions are measurable. So, we have C A, C B, C C, C D not C A, C C and C D in terms of uh, inlet compositions and conversions. Having done that, we can now recognize that the equilibrium constant for this reaction. What is the equilibrium constant for this reaction? K p, k p is p c, p d divided by p a. We know this, correct. And what is the rate at which chemical reaction takes place? We also know that the rate at which chemical reaction takes place under external diffusion control. It is k g times the concentration driving force. What is the concentration driving force? C a minus or C a star. What is C a and what is C a star? This is the particle which is shrinking. C a g is outside and then C a is on the solid surface. Okay. At any instant of time, what you are finding is that this is the driving force, this is C a star on the surface okay. and then this C a we said it is not going to change. Therefore, we can call it as C a g or C a, C a 0. I mean, okay. So, your driving force is C a g minus a C a star, C a g is not changing and therefore, in terms of our conversions, I have written it as C a 0 x a star minus of x a. Correct. What is C a? We have written C a as so, we will have to divide this by 1 plus x a, 1 plus x a star. Okay. So, is that clear? What are we saying? What are we saying is that our driving force, just let me just, I will just come back to in a minute. What is our driving force? C a g minus of C a star, correct. Okay. So, that is what is, we have just now written here, C a minus of C a star is given by this. Okay. C a 0 1 minus of x a 1 plus x a. Therefore, this C a, this C a star and C a which it is known to us okay, because we have written all these things in terms of x a. So, what we are trying to say here is that C a g minus of C a star can be written as C a 0 x a minus of x a star. Okay. This is something we know because C a's are all known. So, divided by let me put this 1 plus C a equal to C a 0 times 1 minus of x a divided by 1 more 1 plus x a. Okay. Okay. Therefore, C a star equal to C a 0 times 1 minus of x a divided by 1 plus x a. Okay. I will call this as C a star. Okay. And what is C a? What is C a? C a equal to which is already mentioned that C a 0 times 1 minus of x a divided by 1 plus x a. Okay. So, I will just write this once again. Okay. So, what we are saying now is that what we are saying now is that R b R b which is equal to minus of k g times c a g minus of c a star. Okay. Okay. Now, this can be written as in this form therefore, it is equal to minus of k g. If the c a g is changing then it will be written as C a minus of C a star, okay, where C a is given by, where C a is given by this expression, C a star is given by this expression. If it is not changing, if C a is not changing, if it is not changing, then it is remaining constant. Therefore, we do not have to use that expression. Okay. So, what we are trying to put across to you is the following, that in the case of a reaction in which thermodynamics, uh, thermodynamics affects the rate of chemical reaction. That means, this C a star is affected by the fact that k p is, uh, is uh, of uh, magnitude that we must take into account. Then, this effect will come in determination of this driving force C a minus of C a star. Okay. Is this clear? Now, having said this, what is the value of k p? What is the value of k p? Now, k p 
from our equation here, it is written as uh, our K p is uh, P c P d, I will just write here K p is P c P d divided by P a. Okay. Now, we can write P c and P d in terms of uh, uh, concentrations and so on. Therefore, finally, what you get here is that the x a star x a star is uh, uh, determined by this equation here. Okay. So, you determine x a star because k p is known, c a 0 is known, r t is known therefore, you can determine x a star. Okay. Once you know x a star, once you know x a star we can also determine c a star we have done that already. Therefore, we are now in a position, we are now in a position to uh, let me just put this down once again. Now, since c a star is known in terms of x a, c a is known in terms of x a therefore, you are able to tell what is the rate at which the chemical reaction will occur because the effect of k p is now accounted. Is that clear? So, to cut this long story short what we are trying to say is that in this reaction carbon plus hydrogen steam giving you carbon monoxide plus uh, hydrogen k p is only 2.6 therefore, the effect of k p must be taken into account. How did we do that? We did that we did that by recognizing that k p is given by p c p d by p a. Okay. Uh, I will put a star here saying it is put a star here. Therefore, uh, k p can be put in terms of uh, conversion which we have done which we have done. Therefore, we find k p and uh, x a star is related by this equation where once k p is known r t is known c a 0 is known therefore, x a star is known. Or in other words we are able to tell what is the driving force this I will have to divide here by 1 plus x a that 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 effect uh, may be uh, this is not the way to do this. This is the at this point we will stop by saying that k g c a minus of c a star c a star is known in terms of k p therefore, we are able to know what is this driving force c a minus of c a star and therefore, we are able to tell what is the effect of the equilibria on the rate of chemical. So, what we are trying to say here we will we will we will put this not like this we will put this as C a uh, g minus of C a star okay. this is the driving force okay. not uh, C a g. Okay. Now, what we have tried to accomplish here is that the rate, this time for complete consumption is previously given only in terms of C a g because C a star was not important. Now, the driving force is C a g minus of C a star. Okay. And what is C a star and what is C a g? Both we can calculate from our uh, understanding of thermodynamics. Okay. What we have done here, let me just put it across to you once again. What we have said is the following. What we have said is that C a and C a star in this case is given by these two equations. Okay. C a and C a star is given by these two equations. And if the if the composition is changing, if the composition is changing, if the composition is not changing, then C a C a g remains the same. Okay it does not change. Now, if for some reason in the flow reactor in which compositions are changing you must take into account the effect of C a g as the composition changes then we will have to use this expression. C a star is given by this C a is given by this. So, that you can you can uh, substitute for both C a g and C a star in this equation and therefore, you know what is the rate function. Okay. So, essentially what we are trying to put across to you now is that for a situation of a shrinking particle if the composition is changing along the length of the reactor we must take that into account by using this formulation that we have said here. If composition is not changing then of course, you do not have to worry about it, but both the cases our formulations are satisfactory because we have taken both situations into account. 